Hi, everybody. My name is Chris Erickson. And um, first of all, I'd like to thank Jim Brogdon and Professor D'Souza for inviting me to take part in this symposium on practice research. My paper is titled Disciplined by the Algorithm what I learned from practicing photography on Instagram. And uh, the context of this research is that um, until now, I, I haven't really thought of myself as a practice researcher. Um, my research interests are fairly um, academic. I focus on um, social norms and law. Uh, for example, um, intellectual property and plagiarism norms um, in online communities, how volunteer collective um, organizations like Wikipedia govern and manage themselves, and overall how incentives um, operate in sort of online settings. And um, in terms of creative pursuit, uh, the practice part of this uh, study, I took up photography in 2019 as a, a kind of escape from academic research, just as a hobby, something to do in my own personal time. Um, and uh, I enjoyed it very much. But uh, what I've come to find is that uh, most of my interaction with photography has been mediated through the platform Instagram. And so a lot of my interest in the academic side um, actually, uh, you know, has something in common with uh, what I've experienced in interacting with this with this platform. So um, this paper emerges from that, and it's an effort by by myself to kind of analyze what it's been like as a practitioner on this um, uh, online platform. So I won't spend too much time on the theoretical literature, but I just want to kind of draw some connections between where my paper and kind of existing work and, and talk about how I think it might fit in, in the existing literature. On the one hand, you know, we've had a long tradition of considering the disciplinary aspects of technology through, um, let's call it the, the e-governmentality uh, literature, in which, um, you know, authors have, have noticed that uh, there's a possibility for us to be understood as subjects in relation to uh, digital technologies such as databases and um, other kinds of ways uh, that that technology um, shapes our, our world. Um, and more recently, there's been a focus on this concept of platformization, that is the um, extent to which platforms shape uh, behavior of their users through things like disciplinary mechanisms, um, like uh, rating systems, um, other kinds of ranking and prioritization that um, reduces individuals' agency and encourages uh, behaviors which might be more beneficial to the platform. There's also been uh, acknowledgement that these mechanisms are sometimes inscrutable. Pasquale calls it the, the black box. Um, essentially, the, the idea that the ways in which the platforms uh, discipline uh, us and, and the way that their algorithms work are not always subject to oversight by users or stakeholders. And uh, Peril and Elkin Corin invite us as researchers to tinker with this black box um, as a kind of research method to figure out through experimentation how these things operate. And uh, as well, I think this paper uh, tries to uh, speak to other literature that focuses on how all of these disciplinary technologies shape aesthetic choices. As Burgess and Green called it, uh, the vernacular, a form of self-expression that they saw so vividly on YouTube, and others like Duffy and Hund and Lewis have, have picked up on um, more recently. Uh, there are particular aesthetic uh, decisions which seem to perform better on platforms than others. Uh, and there's a tendency toward this kind of authentic vernacular self-presentation, the vlogger uh, kind of aesthetic, if you like, that has emerged through um, uh, user-generated content. So that's where I see this work uh, fitting in. Um, what I'm going to do now is just dive right into some of the, the 
propositions that I'd like to make based on, on, on the observations of, of um, practicing photography on Instagram. So uh, my first proposition is that um, offline artistic um, authority or social capital doesn't necessarily translate over to Instagram. When you come to the platform, you're coming brand new. Um, and it's, it's difficult actually for uh, established artists sometimes to gain as much popularity in these online platforms as they might enjoy in the offline world. Uh, as an amateur uh, photographer, an aspiring photographer, that can be appealing because um, because it's a level playing field. I'm coming uh, as an amateur, and I'm but I'm uh, I have just the same amount of tools as uh, more established uh, you know artists might have in terms of growing my my following and popularity on Instagram. And uh, these photographs are just some of the earlier ones I took in 2019. It's just me messing around and trying to sort of figure out what kind of photographs I was interested in taking and not really having much artistic uh, direction. But that changed uh, quite early on uh, in my interaction with Instagram as I discovered um, the role played by hashtags. So hashtags are used on the platform uh, to provide a sort of context and metadata. Uh, there are textual uh, strings that you can append below your uploaded photographs that tell the system and tell other users something about the contents of the images. And in terms of artistic presentation, um, I discovered that what, what more successful photographers were doing was that they were using hashtags that linked their work to established subgenres. Um, and by doing that, they were able to reach a wider audience of people who are interested in that type of photography. Um, so there are hashtags, for example, for uh, documentary, documentary photography, portraiture, all sorts of, of, of subgenres that can you know, have their own hashtags. So that forced me to kind of reflect on, well, what, what is my hashtag? What kind of work am I uh, producing artistically? So I, I came up with um, banal as a uh, hashtag to describe my work, which is really just about everyday scenes that I was encountering as I walked around the village where I was living in Spain and seemed to fit it pretty well. And I discovered that there was a whole community of other people that also were using that hashtag banal. Uh, to uh, uh, describe their work. So that enabled me to connect my um, practice with others in this kind of networked way and, and expose my work to new audiences. Um, some communities even developed more uh, specific hashtags. Like for example, there's one called uh, Burbs on Film, which uh, describe photographs of suburban landscapes uh, in the United States. And I thought, um, I had the idea of, you know, there was no hashtag for burbs of Europe. So I thought, well, why don't we create that? And, and I started that hashtag in the hopes that others would join me and we would could build up a sort of community of people that were interested in that sort of photography. But uh, I discovered that um, nobody was interested in that new hashtag. Nobody knew about it. And so I had a lot of difficulty uh, getting anyone else to participate. So hashtags have a kind of path dependency and they impose a path dependency on the uh, community and the more established hashtags are the ones people tend to uh, use. I started to watch other media and read other media in the hopes that I could get some hints on how to uh, get more followers on Instagram. And there's an entire uh, industry of gurus and marketing experts who uh, are producing content to uh, help uh, aspirant Instagrammers to, to do that. Many of them make reference to uh, sort of work from the mid 2000s, like um, Kevin Kelly's concept of 1000 true fans. And this is essentially um, the observation that uh, successful digital content creators tend to have uh, relationships with their uh, fans, which are direct and uh, individualized. And that by cultivating those kind of relationships, even on a small scale, content creators can gain more popularity. And uh, aesthetically, what this means on Instagram is that, is that the, the gurus were giving the advice that uh, 
artists shouldn't surprise or shock their audiences. They should give their audiences what they expect. And so on the uh, on your Instagram feed, the advice was that all of your photographs should kind of look similar. They should have similar color grading. They should um, you know, have a similar perspective so that users feel comfortable and feel like they're, they're, they, they're, you're somebody who they can depend on for a certain particular type of work. Um, and so I started to do that following that, that advice and organizing my feed and making sure that all of the photos kind of look um, natural next to one another. Here's an example of um, a, a successful day for me uh, in terms of hashtag use. Uh, so I applied uh, various uh, hashtags you can see to this image that I uploaded, uh, including things like uh, banal mag and um, urban landscape, urban geography, you can see them all there. But I was thrilled when a user called minimal banal uh, commented on my photo with some clapping hands emojis and uh, liked, liked my, my post. To me, that felt like a success because I had attracted what looks like a true fan, somebody who shares my same very niche interest in uh, banal photography and uh, who was expressing that they, they liked my work. So this is why, you know, what's so compelling about Instagram is getting comments and feedback and likes from others who are doing similar kinds of things. Let's say that one um, grows uh, as an artist, starts to develop as an artist uh, and wants to do more offline, uh, you know, maybe showing or disseminating of their work. Well, that's actually difficult because Instagram um, actively punishes their users for doing things like linking off the platform. Um, if you try to link, let's say to a store where you're selling print, of your work, Instagram might reduce your reach, um, thinking that you're you're using it for commercial gain, and they don't like that. Um, and so the same thing goes for promoting, for example, shows or other events offline. It's difficult. A lot of the artistic prestige uh, kind of mechanisms are actually built into Instagram. So there are these what you might call magazine feeds that will feature other artists work and um, uh, sort of curate them as if it were a, like an art magazine. So I was very thrilled when one of my pictures was featured in uh, mundane mag, uh, the one there on the left. And that was that type of type of uh, show, but it never made it off of Instagram. It was a kind of artistic prestige, but it stays on the platform. Um, similarly, uh, one of my ex students, who's a very accomplished photographer, uh, put on a physical show at the end of last year when he graduated from the University of Leeds Media School. Um, but one of the, his priorities was to film it with his phone so that he could upload it as a story to Instagram uh, to prove that it that it actually happened. So Instagram absorbs, uh, you know, this this artistic um, activity even when it happens off off of the site. As has been noted elsewhere, um, I've also noted that uh, Instagram really promotes what we might call parasocial relationships. Those are um, more interpersonal relationships with content creators. So rather than uh, just posting one's art or images, uh, users are encouraged to make um, direct to camera address of vlogs or do behind the scenes kinds of self presentation. Uh, and the, the affordances of um, uh, reels, which are short form videos, which Instagram have added, have kind of supplanted uh, still imagery as the main offering of the platform. And it's really um, promoted this practice of uh, filming oneself taking pictures rather than actually showing the, the art itself. So to conclude, what, what, does, this all, what does this all mean? <laughs> What I'm, what I'm trying to do with this paper is uh, essentially an autoethnographic case study about how um, platform discipline is encountered by artists um, when they make art aesthetic choices. And um, what I found is that the mechanism largely works through social norms, such as these subcommunities that form around particular hashtags, but that these subcommunities are themselves responding to the 
architectural constraints of the platform. Because Instagram doesn't help us promote our obscure fine art photography, um, because it's not geared up toward that kind of use, um, we've had to create infrastructure ourselves around a shared hashtag use and other, other ways. Um, any kind of counter movement or alternative Instagram that might emerge is inhibited by the path dependency of the platform. Um, folks who started early on Instagram have vast popularity uh, because they've been at it for a long time. So that makes it very sticky for them to want to stay. Um, it would be hard to entice them to another platform where they have zero uh, followers. Um, and when alternatives have emerged, such as the Granary, which is a new um, platform intended for uh, film photographers, um, we find that it in fact reproduces many of the same uh, affordances of Instagram. Granary looks a lot like Instagram. It even adopts the hashtag functionality. So it doesn't really offer uh, that much of a, of a realistic alternative to this having to engage um, in order to get one's work seen. Have I become a better photographer from using, from using Instagram? Um, I'm of two minds on this. I think on one hand, uh, subjecting myself to the discipline of the algorithm has um, encouraged me to learn more about photography. It, it made me ask questions about what sort of subgenre or niche I thought I wanted to be a part of and to be more intentional in taking photographs that I thought would meet that audience demand. But on the other hand, it produces a kind of tunnel vision because um, we see work that's popular and we seek to emulate that popularity, it means that we're not exposed to the full range of creative possibilities on Instagram. And that might be why there's so much of this kind of uh, 1970s style color photography of gas stations and uh, American vistas, a little bit in the um, kind of tradition of Stephen Shore or, or William Eggleston, um, Instagram largely hasn't moved on from that 1970s because those photos work. They, they get lots of likes. Um, and so it discourages experimentation and, and um, maybe growth. I'll leave, I'll leave you with this. These are the last, uh, some of the last most recent photographs that I've taken and posted on Instagram. Um, and as you can see, I'm very diligently following that guru advice to keep the color grading consistent across the, the feed. Um, but I am, I think, uh, zeroing in more precisely on the kind of subject matter and the kinds of photos that I'm interested in, in making. So thank you very much for, for watching this uh, video. Um, and uh, please consider following me on Instagram. Thank you very much.